In this tutorial, we will be taking a 36 spoke wheel apart and then lacing it back up using the common three cross lacing pattern. You can use any diameter rim you want since the technique is exactly the same. You will need a sharp flathead screwdriver that will tightly fit into the top of the spoke nipples. The spoke heads are mounted through the hub flanges into countersunk holes. The spoke nipples are mounted through the rim holes into the spoke threads. The valve hole will be used as a reference when working around the entire rim. Loosening each spoke a little bit at a time will prevent the rim from being permanently warped. Keep working your way around the rim, starting at the valve hole, until the spoke nipples are loose enough to be turned by hand. This will most likely take at least three revolutions. Once the spoke nipples are loose enough to be removed the rest of the way by hand, lay the rim over a bucket or bowl so that you can work your way around the rim until all of the spoke nipples have been removed. If you are working with used spokes, you may find some of them hard to remove by hand due to slight corrosion around the threads. Use the flathead screwdriver to remove any difficult spoke nipples and the removal process will most likely clean up the threads. Keep working until you have all of the spoke nipples removed from the rim. With all of the spoke nipples removed from the rim, you can complete the wheel disassembly by removing the spokes from the hub flange. Some of the spokes may be slightly bent due to the cross lacing, but they can be easily straightened by bending them back to normal. Badly rusted spokes should not be reused to build another wheel, but dirty spokes can be easily cleaned by using a bit of steel wool. The next part of this tutorial will demonstrate the basic three cross lacing pattern that can be used to build any 36 spoke wheel. We will now rebuild the wheel using the standard three cross lacing pattern for a 36 spoke wheel. Find a comfortable chair to work in so that you can place the rim on your lap for easy access when installing the spokes. Along with the 36 matching spokes and nipples, you will also need a good flathead screwdriver and a 36 hole hub. The spokes must also be the correct length, but since we are putting the rim back together, all of the parts are guaranteed to fit. Okay, let's start adding spokes to the hub by placing them through the holes into every second hole. These spokes get pushed into the holes so that the spoke heads end up on the outside of the flange, visible to you. Keep adding spokes into every second hole until you have all nine spokes installed. Once you have all nine spokes installed, check to make sure they are in every second hole. Most wheel building mistakes are due to incorrect spacing of the holes and spokes. Take a close look at the holes in the rim. You will notice that the holes are offset from one another, with some being closer to you and some further away. The spoke will always go into the rim hole that is offset towards the hole in the hub flange. The first spoke to be installed in a wheel will go into the hole closest to your side right next to the valve stem. This hole could be on either side of the valve stem, but on this rim it is on the left side. You should now have a spoke installed in every second hole of the hub flange, with the spoke heads on the outside of the flange. Now locate the key spoke hole, which will be the one next to the valve hole offset closest to you. Spoke nipples will be installed with four turns each when first installing spokes. This will keep the spokes from unscrewing while you work on the rim, but will also keep them slack until truing the wheel. Now insert the key spoke into the correct hole next to the valve hole and give the spoke nipple four turns in the clockwise rotation. The rest of the spokes will now be installed into the rim so there is a gap of three empty holes between each spoke. 
so you'll be skipping one, two, three, installing into the fourth hole, leaving a gap of three empty holes between each spoke. Most mistakes will be made on the rim when skipping holes, so double check your count while installing single spokes and after when a full set of nine spokes has been installed. Skip one, two, three. At this point in the wheel lacing, an error in count will be very obvious, but it will be more difficult to see a miscount when more than 18 spokes are installed in the rim. Obviously, I miscounted here with one of the rim hole spacings, but that is an easy fix. Now the first set of nine spokes has been installed, and there will be three more sets of nine spokes to make up the entire 36 spoke wheel. The first wave of nine spokes must exit the hub at an angle, and this angle can be either clockwise or counterclockwise. This depends on the location of the key spoke. If the key spoke is to the left of the valve hole, then your hub will wrap to the left. If your key spoke is to the right of the valve hole, then your hub will wrap to the right. Since my key spoke is to the left, I will wrap the spokes to the left by turning the hub in the counterclockwise rotation to seat the spokes. This is done so the valve stem has plenty of room between the spokes. Now take another spoke and install it into any hole on the hub, but this time pull it through the hub towards you so that the head of the spoke is on the opposite side of the flange. Pull this new spoke up to the rim alongside of the neighboring spoke so that both of them are running in a line together up to the rim. You will now count 10 holes away from the neighbor spoke and install this new spoke into the 10th hole so that there is a total of 9 holes between the new spoke and the neighbor spoke. So once again, counting from the new spoke to the neighbor spoke, you will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 holes between them. So once again, shown starting at the neighbor spoke. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and into the 10th hole. But since this is a three cross lacing pattern, the new spoke is woven underneath the last spoke that it crosses. So now the lacing pattern goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, now weave underneath that third spoke, inserting into the tenth hole so that the crossing spoke is over top of your new spoke. Install a spoke nipple into the new spoke to hold it in place. This will also keep your hub wrapped in the proper direction so that you can install the other eight spokes in this set. Now you can see the pattern. One, two, three, cross. The other eight spokes now just copy this one. Now that you have your first crossing spoke installed, the other eight are easy. Just skip one hub hole and then skip three rim holes, just like you did when you installed the first set of nine spokes. So the next crossing spoke is pulled through the hub in the next open hole. The hole between the two crossing spokes is taken up by a spoke with the head facing you. Now skip one, two, three and install into the fourth hole but remember to lace under the last spoke before you install into the rim. As you install more spokes, there will be less thread sticking up past the top of the rim, so it may be easier to turn the spoke nipple from the side rather than the top. The two new spokes now have a gap of three holes between them in the rim and one hole in the hub just like the initial set of nine spokes you installed at the beginning. Keep installing spokes using this same pattern, with a gap of one hole at the hub and a gap of three holes on the rim, lacing underneath the last spoke before installing into the rim. Try to install all of the spoke nipples using the same number of turns so that the wheel will be somewhat true once they are all hand tightened later.
When you are weaving the crossing spoke under the other spoke, you will find it needs to be bent somewhat in order to make it fit. This is fine, but try to avoid scratching the surface of your rim with the top of the spoke as it is forced around the crossing spoke. If you place your finger over the top of the spoke threads as you lace them, then you can avoid scratching your rim. Install the rest of the crossing spokes until you have 18 spokes installed in the hub. This will complete the first side of your wheel. You will know if you made a mistake when you install the last crossing spoke. If there is more than one empty hole between any two spokes, then you need to go back and find your mistake. Now you only have to duplicate what you just did onto the other side of the hub in order to complete your wheel. The other side of the wheel is going to be laced in the same way, but the placement of the first spoke is important. Push a spoke into the hub through any hole so that it is parallel to the hub shell. Since the holes on each side of the flange are offset, this spoke will hit the space between two holes on the other side of the flange. What you are trying to do here is find the matching spoke on the other side of the flange. This will be the spoke with its head on the other side of the flange out of your view. Depending on the orientation of your rim, this spoke may be offset to the left or right of the spoke you are using as a locator. If the matching spoke is leaning to the left as it is in my rim, then this new spoke will be installed in the hole to the right of the matching spoke. But if your matching spoke is heading towards the right of the rim, then your new spoke will also run towards the right and get installed in the hole just to the left of the matching spoke. Once you have that first spoke installed on this side of the rim, it is only a matter of duplicating the pattern, skipping one hub hole and three rim holes. Install the next eight spokes until you have all nine spokes installed from this set. Remember to place your finger over the top of the spoke threads as you bend them into place to avoid scratching your rim surface. Just like before, there's one, two, three rim holes between each spoke you install. Once you have the first nine spokes installed in this side of the rim, check to make sure your spacing is correct. There should now be groups of three spokes in the rim with a gap of one hole between each group. Now the nine crossing spokes will be installed. The next nine spokes will cross the last set of nine spokes you just installed. And just like before, you will skip one hole in the hub flange and then skip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine holes in the rim. The remaining nine spokes will be pulled through the hub flange so that the heads are on the other side of the flange out of your view. Once again, you will be crossing over one, two, and three spokes weaving under the third to complete that three cross lacing pattern. And since there will be only one empty hole after the cross, it is easy to figure out where in the rim this spoke will be installed. So looking at it once again, starting at the neighboring spoke, you will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 rim holes, making sure to cross underneath that third spoke, installing into the tenth hole. You can now follow the same basic pattern of installing spokes with one hole between them on the hub and three holes between them on the rim. The next eight spokes will complete the wheel lacing. Now install the final eight crossing spokes, skipping one hole on the hub flange and three holes in the rim, working around the rim until you have all the spokes installed. Pull these spokes through the hub, skip one, two, three holes on the rim, then cross under that last spoke, being careful not to scratch the rim as you bend the spoke into place. You may have to straighten the spoke after bending it into place so that you can install the spoke nipple. 
Just flex it back into shape by giving it a bend in the opposite direction. Keep following the same pattern until the final spoke is installed, completing the lacing of your 36 spoke 3 cross wheel. If you made any errors with the hole spacing, then the last spoke will either not fit or your pattern will look strange, not matching as it should on both sides of the wheel. If your lacing worked out, then you can start truing the wheel. At this point, your spokes will all be very loose and your wheel will not be running true. So you need to start tightening the spokes one at a time, starting at the valve hole, working your way around the rim. Turn each spoke nipple in the clockwise rotation about three turns each, working around the rim using the valve hole as the reference point. By tightening the spokes a little at a time, you make the final wheel truing job easier, although it will still take some patience. Keep working around the rim, turning the spoke nipples a few turns each until they have seated flat on the rim and you can no longer turn them by hand. The remainder of the wheel truing process will now be done using a sharp flathead screwdriver. Now that you have each spoke nipple tightened as much as you can by hand, turn them all another two turns using the flathead screwdriver, once again starting at the valve hole. When tightening spokes, you will always be turning in the clockwise rotation. As the crossing spokes are pulled tight, they will straighten out, but you can make your truing work easier by flexing the spokes by hand in order to help pull them straight. Grab a cluster of opposing spokes and then squeeze them together as hard as you can, doing this around the entire rim. At this point, you will need a truing stand to hold your rim for the final adjustments. A pair of front forks will work perfectly for this. Place your wheel into a set of forks that are held in place by a vise or stand. Being able to spin your wheel against a fixed reference point makes it easy to see which side of the rim needs alignment. At this stage, your wheel is most likely out of true by an inch or more. Truing a wheel is actually a very simple process. If you tighten the spokes on the right side of the flange, then the rim is pulled to the right. If you tighten the left side spokes, then the rim will be pulled to the left. What you need to do is use a fixed reference point in order to determine which direction you need to adjust the rim. Stop the rim at the deflection point and then tighten some of the spokes on the same side as you want to adjust the rim to. When making your corrections, adjust three or more spokes around the deflected area of the rim, but only turn them one turn each or you may end up deflecting the rim to the other side. Each time you make an adjustment, spin your rim and look at the reference point to see if you made it better or worse. Although truing is an easy process, it is definitely a job that takes time and patience. If this is your first attempt at truing a wheel, then expect it to take several hours just to get the rim to the point where it is deflecting no more than a quarter inch. You also have to align the wheel onto the hub so that it is not deflecting up and down. Tighten spokes on the side of the rim you want to bring closer to the hub. Take your time and work with a few spokes at a time until you have your deflection reduced to about a quarter inch. If you find your spokes getting too tight in some areas, you will have to loosen them a bit, keeping in mind which way the rim will deflect. It's that last small deflection that can be the most difficult to remove, and when your rim is close to true, only use half turns when adjusting the spokes. With careful adjustment of the spoke tension, you should be able to get your wheel running true with almost no visible deflection. Learning to build your own wheels will save you time and money when creating your bikes and trikes, so it is a worthwhile skill to master.